Bay Buccaneers from the 48-yard line. Second down, 13. Brady lobs one downfield. Caught ball by Gronkowski. Inside the 20 to the 15-10. Gronkowski to the 5 to the 4-yard line. Holy Gronk, holy. <laughs> Third down, 18. Dropping again and looking again and looking again. Those up the middle. Hands hey, intercepted at the Derek 30. Brooks. Derek Brooks, 30. Brooks to the 25, He's 20. Gone. Derek Brooks all the way. There it is. The dagger's in. No. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, baby. This is the big nasty. Yeah, big nasty. Hall of Fame Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, baby. This is Mike Allstott, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Cannon Fire Podcast. Cannon Fire Podcast, brother. You ain't listening, and you're missing out. Woo! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new edition of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Back at you today for episode 171. As of this week, we have kicked off our off-season coverage, and I guess this is the first free agency edition of the show. I'm your host, as always, Rhett Matthew, joined alongside me, my good buddy and co-host, Philly Bucks fan himself, Mr. Shaved Face, Evan Wanish. Looking good, buddy. How you doing? Doing uh, pretty good. Thanks for thanks for pointing that out. I know there's... <laughs> there was I know there's there's one guy in, in the comments that like routinely roasts me for for the little mustache I had so hopefully that can take a backseat for a little bit now. Oh man, I mean the only way to get better is to shave it. So you know you you bounce back, you're gonna bounce back even stronger. So yeah. I, I believe in you, I, I really do. So listen, I, I'll just be straight to the point. We're gonna talk about a lot of the free agents the Buccaneers have on their hands because it is quite a long list. There's a couple of players that are a little bit more important than others, but, you know, I, I've been kind of reluctant to do this episode. Um, I, I've been kind of reluctant to do this show, not only because, you know, our coverage this year has kind of thrown off my usual schedule. I feel like I'm a little unprepared. I feel like I haven't done as much homework as I should, and that's just because I've been too busy celebrating a Super Bowl title. But I've been a little bit reluctant to do this episode because of guys like Mike Garofalo who go on TV every single day and basically just talk out of their ass. Uh, reported yesterday that it seems like the general sense is that Levante David will be headed elsewhere. Since then, he's done some pretty remarkable backpedaling, and he is now pretty much saying it's the opposite. And stuff like that gets me reluctant to do episodes like this because it seems like everybody jumps on reports like that they want to be the first to talk about it, first to talk about why it will or will not happen. When at the end of the day, I said this at the beginning of the season review show, it seems like 65-70% of what comes out, especially floating around headlines like that, is just bullshit. Yeah, it's um, it's it's uh, that season, right? It's uh, yeah. the season of everybody trying to get a scoop, everybody trying to uh, trying to be first, just like you said. And, I mean, good, good on uh, Mike uh, for sort of owning up to it because a lot of people like wouldn't, you know, I, I know a, a ton of people that you know, have said stuff in the past and then don't own up to it when they're wrong. Um, and he, you know, he said he spoke to some people and, you know, he, he apologized basically. He said, he said my bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it all seemed rather weird because what he was saying. So he said it on what Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, he says Levante David's likely heading elsewhere, but he didn't really report it. Like, it's not something he said, like, per source. No, he, he's like, I he, would think like, that this happens. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he and I, and I know you, you know, we quote tweeted it with the art with the quote and stuff like that. And, uh, but then Thursday, he comes out and says, like, hey, like, I've I've spoken to some people now. So there's a source. And it doesn't sound like he's going to go anywhere. There's going to be a lot of suitors, which I'm sure, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of suitors if. You know, Shaq Barrett, Chris Godwin, even like guys like Rob Gronkowski, if they would hit free agency, there's going to be suitors. Um, and, and that's no, the Levante David is no exception, but um, good on Garofalo to, to sort of backtrack, rewind, say, you know, my bad, I got this wrong when a lot of people wouldn't. But at the same time, just don't believe everything you read right at the start. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's true, but there's just as much as true, probably 70% of it's lies. So uh, it's, it's definitely agents or teams or just the player trying to, to do what's best for their client slash team. Uh, and, and it's, it's really uh, the, the season where if you see a rumor, 
don't just run with it immediately. <laughs> so while we're talking about Levante David, let's go ahead and kick things off with him. There is that, you know, the big three is I would refer to them. Shaq Barrett, Levante David, and Chris Godwin. Those are the three guys that I think are on a higher pedestal than pretty much every other free agent the Bucks have because it mm. seems like those are the biggest question marks. And all of those guys, it could go any type of way. You know, I will say that I feel confident enough about – a situation where the Buccaneers hang on to all of them, if not two out of three. But let's talk about Levante while we're talking about it. Expectations for what's going to happen. Well, you know, there was that report, rumor that came out literally the week after the Super Bowl saying that Levante wants to break the market. He wants to be the highest paid linebacker in the NFL. Um, and then obviously Garofalo kind of, you know, assuming a couple of days ago and, and making an ass out of himself. And I guess I have to give him props for running it back and apologizing. But here we are. Levante David, nine-year vet, just won a Super Bowl. I think for the Bucks, you know, their best bet at this point is a short-term contract. The guy's over 30. So I have the belief that maybe a three-, four-year deal with some favorable money is in store for him. But I just, you know, the idea that he's going to leave Tampa Bay to go break the bank somewhere else, it just doesn't seem very realistic for a guy like Levante. He's been on how many terrible defenses, how many awful head coaches. I mean, he finally won a Super Bowl with the team that took a chance on him all those years ago. He's been through so much. And the fact that they won the Super Bowl and they're in a position to just keep getting better, like why the hell would he want to leave? Yeah, it's it's questionable. Um, if, if he was twenty eight years old, like if he if he's obviously we'll get Shaq Barrett, but like if he was in Shaq Barrett's situation, then you could see it maybe, right? But I mean, at this point, he's thirty one years old. He's an inside linebacker, so inside linebackers aren't going to get a ton of money anyway. Uh, he made ten point seven uh, seven five million dollars, I think, last year. Um, and then spot racks market value for him right now is 12.7. So a slight bump, which you're going to expect um, pretty much. I think even though he is older, um, you're, you're, you're going to give him a, a slight bump just to say, Hey, like, you know, thanks a lot. So I do think what you said, I, I think a three-year deal, I, I think four is a little bit much Four that puts him in a 35 years old. Like if it is 12.7 mil, you will be paying a 35 year old, you know, over $12 million. I don't know. Um, so I think a two or three year deal, uh, basically just say, hey, like you're going to spend most of your career in Tampa. Maybe you leave after that deal when you, you know, maybe the Bucks are in a completely different situation and then you go ring chase then, whatever. But for now, I think a two, three-year deal, you could stay put on in the range of 11 to 13 million. So spot rack, I think has it right. If I had to guess, I would say it's around 12 million a year. So around three years, 12 million a year. And obviously like with maybe with some incentives or the way you can, you can work contracts yeah. is, uh, you know, in the NFL, nobody will completely understand it except for the cap guys and the bucks have one of the best uh, and Mike Greenberg. So uh, I do think that Levante sticks around on a two or three year deal. I, I don't think he goes anywhere. Just like you said, just, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I, the Browns are a team that are interested. The Browns are good, but like, are they are they a Super Bowl contender? Like, when you have to face Kansas City and Buffalo in that conference, like, you might not even be. You're like maybe the third or fourth best team in the conference. Like, the the Bucks, I think, are definitely a top two team in in their own conference, and they just won the Super Bowl. So why not just run it back? I, I think that's the easy decision for Levante, and I, I think that's what's going to end up happening. And if there's one thing 54 has proven over the years is that he's not going to be a guy who's afraid of like a team friendly deal, because let's face it, the Bucks are in a very different situation than they've ever found themselves in these last five to 10 to 15 off seasons. You know what I mean? They're, they're kind of looking at priority. Number one is keeping this team together and it's going to involve moving a lot of money around, maybe cutting some guys that you're not comfortable with cutting. But Levante, if he's going to take a little bit less to stay in Tampa Bay and still compete for a ring as opposed to whatever Cleveland would want to pay him or another team that's in the market for a linebacker at his position, then you know I, I have no doubts that he would stick around in Tampa Bay. I think he's the happiest he's ever been. Him and Devin White, without a doubt this season, the best linebacker duo in the NFL, and they both know that. They know what this defense, the, the step that they can take. And uh, he just knows he's in a good situation. So I'm pretty confident that the Buccaneers retain him. Well, you, you know who else knows that? Jason Light. Like, oh, yeah. He, he knows that. 
Like, you know, he knows how valuable Jason Light re-signed Levante David. Uh, that was in Jason Light's second season as a general manager. He In his first season, he re-signed Gerald McCoy. In his second season, he re-signed Levante David. So he knows how valuable Levante David is. Plus, Levante is a Nebraska, Nebraska guy. So that, yeah, helps that certainly too, helps. So, um, so I, I think, yeah, he definitely realizes it. And I think the, the defense, obviously, they would have to find a Super Bowl replacement for him. Right, Matt Milano is the name has been thrown out there from the Bills. Um, a free agent, maybe a bit cheaper than David. He's, he's a lot younger. Um, I believe he's 27 or so, maybe 26. Um, but you know, are you going to get the same thing? Is it going to be the same defense? No. I mean, I think right now your best bet is Levante David. And I think that ultimately gets done. Absolutely. Let's talk about the wide receiver, Chris Godwin, the guy who has the most potential to go out there and break the wide receiver market. Uh, let's talk about the franchise tag because I think you and I can both agree that it's the most realistic option. I know that the Bucks have talked about getting a long-term deal done with their guys, and Chris Godwin has even welcomed, you know, uh, trying to get a long-term deal done. He's been vocal about it, saying, you know, I want to get paid, but I also don't want to be miserable. He knows what's going on in Tampa Bay, but the franchise tag is what I want to look at first and foremost. Let's talk about the franchise tag, Evan. I want you to kind of fill people in because it seems like this season of all seasons, a lot of people are just deathly afraid of using the franchise tag. And a lot of people look at it as a bad move for the Bucs. And, and frankly, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand there are concerns with it because the biggest thing is with a franchise tag, you can't structure that any other way. Right. So the franchise tag is a set number, which is, I believe, is like the averages of the highest paid receivers or something like that, or highest paid at the position. And that's the number. Uh, a lot of people were on, it was actually around 18 million, I think, last year for a receiver. But with the cap, you know, staying where it is, it went, it went down to, it's believed to be around 15.8, maybe like 16.5 or so. Um, so which, I think which you for know, Chris concern, Godwin, by the way, which Good for Chris money. Godwin, he's not going to be one of those guys who's upset on the tag yeah. because he just made what, like a little over half a million this year, nine nine hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, like come yeah. on, man. So uh, he's going to go from nine hundred k to to sixteen million. So, uh, and he would be you know have a chance to hit the market again next year when he's what twenty six years old. So Absolutely, he could get twenty plus million a year. Uh, so uh, I do think you know the reason people are concerned is because like I said, there's no way to structure that. Right. You can't you can't move that money. So let's say it's 16 million and let's say you apply a tag to Godwin. Boom, that's 16 million gone. Like it, it's gone. Like you can't say, oh, we'll pay you, you know, eight in this and eight in this. So actually it says 16, but it's not. No, like that that's gone. Whereas in a long term deal, you can say, hey, we'll give you 20 mil in your third year after you know your cap hit in year one is going to be eight million dollars and your cap hit in year two is going to be 10 and that'll go up to 20 yeah. you can structure it in a way to save some money uh does god want to do that obviously every player wants a long-term deal but like if he goes out in the market if he if the bucks let him go to the market he's gone which like, they won't I, no i i, I don't me, i'm pretty confident yeah yeah i think we can both also say we're pretty confident about chris godwin not going anywhere but this last At least guy, for, for for the for this season for this yeah, season I yeah think the, the franchise tag is the most likely option i i think the bucks would love to get a long-term deal done so they don't have to deal with this next offseason again uh spot rack has value at 17.1 on a long-term deal. I personally think it's going to be more than that. I think if he goes on the open market, uh, you're looking at 19, 20, maybe 21 million a year. And I just think that's, that's more than the bucks are willing to pay. So if he does hit the market, he's going to be gone, but I just don't see a way they don't franchise tag him, which today's March 5th. We're recording this podcast Friday, March 5th. The deadline to, to franchise tag guys is Tuesday, March 9th. So that's, that's coming up. So you're going to see some news here. Uh, probably uh, maybe over the weekend about Chris Godwin. It'll probably be as soon as we're done recording this podcast. I'll, sure, get a, yeah. I'll get a notification that the Buccaneers are planning to use the tag on Chris Godwin. But let's talk about this last guy, Shaq Barrett. A another potential candidate for the franchise tag. He was hit with it last year. I don't think the Bucks would be comfortable with hitting him two years in a row. And I know he definitely would not be happy with playing on it two years in a row, but it's a possibility. So for Shaq Barrett, the Bucks are in a situation where I think priority number one is obviously going to be a long-term deal. Shaq is a guy who earned his money during the playoffs, the most important stretch of the season. He showed up and showed out. 
I think having Vita Vea in the middle makes Shaq Barrett a much better pass rusher. I think it makes JPP a better pass rusher. But as far as number 58 goes, I think the Bucks ultimately do find a way to get a deal done. You know, let's talk about the possibility of the Buccaneers, the scenario that would have to happen of them keeping all three because it's another mm-hmm. one of those things, kind of like how I talked about people are scared of the franchise tag. People are scared of the Bucks losing one of these guys. And let's be frank, mm-hmm. all three of them are impact players for this team. But I think there is a realistic situation where the Buccaneers can find a way to re-sign Levante David, slap Chris Godwin with a franchise tag, and maybe sign Shaq Barrett. Uh, yeah, if, if I was... See, the one that I would be concerned about, out of the big three, per se, <clears throat> um, it would be Shaq Barrett because yeah. it, it's tricky. Uh, you know, he had obviously 19 and a half sacks playing on, what, $4 million? Yeah. And then, you know, he, received, he receives the franchise tag, so the Bucks say, hey, like, try to do it again. Obviously, he's not going to get 19 and a half sacks. But, um, so, then he, I believe, uh, what, around $16 million or so was the franchise tag. And then, I mean, his regular season was really up and down. Uh, there, there were times where, like, he was, like, invisible. Uh, and, obviously, the loss of Vita Vea really impacted that entire defensive line. And that's what I thought was going to be a downfall of this team. I was like, can they get the consistent pass rush? And on this show, we were like, Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul, like, they need to show up. Yeah. And we were talking about that in the regular season even. So, um, if you would have asked me after week 17 <laughs> – if Shaq Barrett would be back, I would have said, uh, probably not. But then the playoffs happened. And uh, particularly those last two games when Via Vea came back. And, I mean, you know, that's a huge thing. Uh, Green Bay, I believe, what do you have? Two and a half or three sacks against Green Bay. Shaq Barrett, um, just relentless there. And then in the Super Bowl, he made a real impact. I believe Peter King said that he was debating either Tom Brady or Shaq Barrett for his vote for Super Bowl MVP. I mean, yeah. you know, Shaq Barrett was a big time player in that Super Bowl. And I don't believe they win the Super Bowl without Shaq Barrett. And in I, two games. I also believe an interesting stat that I had seen over the last two seasons, Jason Pierre, Paul and Shaq Barrett are number one in quarterback yeah. pressure in the league. Yeah. Yeah. Shaq Barrett, Shaq Barrett alone is like, like I think number one in pressure since 2019. So um, his market value is 19.7 million, which is, you know, it's, it's a pass rusher, you know, that's, that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, he's not. Yeah. So the franchise tag is not really an option for Shaq Barrett because he got franchised last year. So if you get franchised again, the number actually goes up. Mm. So it's about 18 and a half. I think if you're just going to franchise him for 18 and a half million, why not just go like an extra mill and get a long term? Um, so I don't really think the franchise tag is something that's going to happen there and something. Yeah. doesn't sound like he'd be playing on just like we talked about Levante David and Shaq bear are in two very different situations. Shaq bear is 28 years old and is just, this is the final chance he gets to make some money. Levante David's already had his big contract, right? Uh, Shaq Barrett, this is it. Like this, he's going to sign a four or five year deal. And by the end of it, he's going to be 32, 33 years old and nobody's going to pay him $19 million a year anymore. So he needs the cash in here. And, and that, that would be the one I'm above of the big three. The one I'd be concerned about leaving is Shaq Barrett, but ultimately I still don't know if they let him go. I mean, it, it's a, it, it is, Something that to look for, and we're, we're going to obviously mention this maybe a little bit later. Some other free agents that are actually not on the Bucks that they could they could look at, and if you know if Shaq Barrett leaves, that's I think something they would target. There's Leonard Floyd from L.A. Bud uh, Dupree, Matt, Bud Dupree he has the injury, but it sounds like he's going to be ready to go. Uh, Matt Judon and Yannick Ngakwe from Baltimore, Melvin Ingram from L.A. Uh, you got a lot of different guys and a lot of intriguing names there. But are any of them on the level of Shaq Barrett? They might be cheaper, which is what you're going to have to weigh. Is a, is a Yannick Ngakwe at $16 million better than Shaq Barrett at $20 million? I, I don't know. That's what the Bucks have to determine. Ultimately, yeah, I, I think they keep all three. And um, I think they signed Shaq Barrett to a long-term deal uh, for around $19 million, I think, 19 and a half. I do think, though, Scott Reynolds had said this on – on Peter Reports podcast, and I, I agreed with it. I think the Bucks are going to let him go. I, I don't think David and, and Godwin aren't going to even touch the market. Yeah, I don't think, I think those Shaq, guys are even going to get Shaq a chance. Barrett, Shaq Barrett is. Uh, I think he's going to enter free agency. 
it, it, it's just the tampering. The tampering starts uh, March 15th and free agency officially opens March 17th. So maybe, you know, it takes a day and he's back on March 16th. But <laughs> I think the Bucks are going to let him go and, and see, you know, what are teams offering. And I think if – I think he likes Tampa. So I think if it's close – if another team's offering him 20 mil or, you know, 20 mil a year for four years. And but the Bucks like throw 18, 19. Yeah, and the Bucks throw you know four years, nineteen million. I think you'd probably come back. Like, but I mean, if if it's so, if somebody's offering him twenty two, twenty three million dollars, like he's gone. You know, yeah. um, it's just something you know, you can only go so far. And I think the Bucks will will have a number. And I don't think they'll. I think they'll stick to that number. But ultimately, I, I do think he's back too. So at this point, I mean, the Bucks are the Bucks are gonna have to make some moves to create some cap space because right now, you know, we got Chris Godwin at what sixteen million, Levante David at twelve. Shaq Barrett at nearly 20. I mean, it's uh, it's not going to be easy, but I think they'll find a way. Yeah, and, and like you said, Mike Greenberg being one of the best at managing the cap for Tampa Bay these last few seasons, they've been able to make some moves that not a lot of people saw coming. I mean, it helps that they got a couple of great players this season for peanuts, but you know, yeah. I, th- I, I trust in those guys to do a good job, and if there's ever an offseason that I fully trust Jason Light, it's going to be this one. Now let's go down the list of some other restri- or unrestricted free agents on this Buccaneers roster. Next up in that wide receiver room, your number three from this last year, wide receiver Antonio Brown. This is an interesting case because we've mentioned it briefly before, but, but now we kind of have the time on our hands to really take a deep dive into this. I am 50-50. I, I really oh. think that Antonio Brown has this mindset of he would rather not play without Tom Brady. I, I think he knows his role on this team and he's ready to embrace it. But I also, you know, the other 50% of me believes that there is a team who would maybe want to, I don't know about overpay him, but pay him more than what Tampa would and, and maybe in a little bit more of a prominent role. Because I think Antonio Brown based off of what we saw this season, he can definitely be a wide receiver one for plenty of teams in the NFL. So if a team wants to throw that money at him and take a chance, he could be, you you know, he could be out of here, but there's just that other part of me that thinks he doesn't want to play without Tom Brady because he kind of owes this career turnaround to TB12. And, you know, where would he be without him at this point is the way that I look at it. But where do you fall on uh, Antonio Brown and free agency? Uh, I'm exactly pretty much where you are. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I really don't know if, if you would have asked me like right after, I would have said, yeah, Antonio Brown's probably gone. Like right after the Super Bowl, I would have said, like, yeah, he's probably gone. Like, well, he, I did, done. I did. I remember we talked about it briefly, and you're like, yeah, I don't see a situation where he comes back. Yeah, I mean, it's, but then you know that was a month ago, right? I mean, the Super Bowl, well, it'll be Sunday. Sunday will be a month. Yeah, don't it's, remind it's crazy, me, man. Right? Holy hell. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, the, the, if he comes back to the bucks, it's, it's not going to be for a lot of money. Like it's yeah. going to be for like two, $3 million. Right. Like, it's if a team, I, I'm looking at a team like Baltimore and there, there was a report that Baltimore is not expected to go after the top free agent wide receivers. So it's like Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, those types of guys. I mean, Baltimore had interest in him when he was coming off a of suspension. Do, do they just throw like six million his way on a one-year deal? Right, the Bucks can't match that. Like they they, they can't. Uh, not with the receiver depth they have, uh, you know, and, and the other needs that they have. The guys they need to to bring back at more important positions, they they can't pay him six million dollars. So if, if he is coming back, it's going to be on a one-year deal, two million dollars, maybe a little bit of guarantees. I don't know how much. How much guaranteed money do you want to give the guy? Because at the end of the day, his past is still there, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, he's been a he's been a good soldier, right? But his past actions are still there, and you don't know what's going to happen. He had to be he was on his best behavior, but he had to be on his best behavior. We've talked about it before, right? This was his last chance in Tampa. His, his I mean, his last chance in the NFL, right? If he got cut, nobody else was picking him up. And I mean, and maybe he looks at it as being it the same way this year, right? He'll sign a one-year deal with somebody, and if he's cut for disciplinary reasons, uh, he's done. So maybe he does return to Tampa and, and be that good, good guy. But I don't know. I, I think he comes back. Uh, I yeah. think I, I do. I, I think pr- one-year deal, two and a half, maybe three million dollars. Some incentives in there again. 
um, you know, touchdowns, playoff wins, Super Bowl wins, something like that. I think, I think he does come back though. I think he he hits free agency. I think maybe it's later in the process that he comes back. Uh, maybe you know, two three weeks into free agency, sort of like Nadam Kinsu did last year. I remember he didn't sign right away. He went to free agency, and we'll get into him shortly. But um, I think Brown comes back. But it is a. I think he's actually one more intriguing one just because it's truly. 50 50 like Shaq Barrett right. I think it's like 60 40 back but Antonio Brown I mean you can literally toss it up and if you said he was gone I'd believe you if he, you said he was back I'd believe you and it's one of those situations that's just hard to predict and I think that's what makes it so interesting because you don't know what a team is going to be willing to pay him until they officially just throw that offer out there and you see what his market value is because as of right now anybody who says they know they're lying because nobody knows. Like, nobody knows. What do other teams see in Antonio Brown at this point yep, in his career? Exactly. He is a Super Bowl champion. He is a wide receiver one on a lot of teams. And, frankly, there, he's there's one of the probably, greatest wide receivers of the entire decade. So, I mean, it, it's in, crazy. In the, history to, of the, in the history of the league. It's like, crazy. If, if to you think look that, at his numbers, it's it, insane. It's crazy to think that we're talking about Antonio Brown in this capacity. But, you know, like we mentioned all the off the field stuff, everything else that we've talked about plenty of times over, it just factors into the to the conclusion that you don't know until you know. Dude, there there might be there's there's 32 teams in the league, so split it right, 16. There might be 16 teams that won't touch him with right. a 10 foot pole. Right. But there might be 16 teams that say, yeah, I'll take Antonio Brown. Right. I think the Bucks are one of those 16 that say, like, you know, they would like him back, but they would like him back on their price. So it's a very interesting case. We actually, we, I think we spent the most time on Antonio Brown than anybody right now yeah. because it's, it is such a curious thing. Um, but I, do, I think the Bucks would like him back, but I don't think they're going to bend over backwards to, to get him back. Absolutely. Now, these next two guys on the list, I don't think we're going to spend nearly as much time on because I think while they are on opposite ends of the spectrum, it, it seems like a clear-cut conclusion as to where these guys are going to go. First up, running back Leonard Fournette. I think playoff Lenny's going to take his money and run. I think another team will overpay for him, and, and he can take his three and a half yards per carry somewhere else. Man, All right, what did playoff Lenny do to you? Nothing. I mean, um, he won me a damn Super Bowl. You know, I love the guy. Don't get me wrong. I just I, – I, I, I see a situation where, yeah. you know, he's not really going to want to budge on what he wants. <laughs> I, I think there is a market for a player like Leonard Fournette, and he's ultimately going to go and try and get as much money as he can because, you know, deep down he's got to know that at the end of the day he's a running back, and paying running backs is a very slippery slope. And obviously the Bucks are not in a situation right now where they need to bend over backwards to pay a running back. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because – um yet again it's another case where a playoff run really helps somebody huh because yeah, if you would yeah. ask if you yeah i'm using this a lot but if you would have asked me at, after week 17 i would have said Fournette might be back in tampa but it's gonna be at like two billion dollars and is he ain't gonna get much interest from elsewhere now he had you know he had a touchdown every playoff game uh you know in, in every playoff game is nationally televised everybody's watching it uh had that long touchdown in the super bowl some yeah, I just I think he's gone. Uh, some team's gonna pay him. Maybe not a complete overpay, but like I think anything over three million dollars is pretty much out of the Bucks range. I think somebody's gonna pay him maybe like a two year deal, four and a half mil or so a year, five mil a year, and I, I think he's gonna he's gonna go. There's a lot of intriguing options, which I mean we might get to later on in the show. You know about some some options there uh, at running back, and particularly in free agency, but there's. There's a good list of them, uh, just yeah. like a pass rusher. Um, so I do think Fournette's going to go. Uh, I think the Bucks would like him back, but yet again, I think they're going to hold firm on their price, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that Fournette won't be back. Now this other guy that I had on my mind, big number 87 tight end, Rob Gronkowski. I mean, come on, dude. Gronk's not this playing. This is the without, easiest one. Dude, he's this not playing without one. Brady. Like, yeah. he's just not. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Bronk, this, it, this is – Gronk this is a guy does, that literally he threatened to retire if he was traded to the Lions I, in 2017. So. I just called him Bronk, which I think is the official name of the Brady Gronk romance, the bromance. There you go. You know what I mean? But but yeah, I mean, yeah. Th this one's pretty simple. I don't think Gronk is afraid of taking a team friendly deal. He's made his money. Apparently, he hasn't even touched his NFL money because of all the sponsorship opportunities that he gets. And I mean, he's just rolling. He's getting in that it, money man. from Vince and WWE, man. What else does he have to prove? He doesn't <laughs> need to go break the bank for the tight end market in the NFL. And I know that there are teams who would be looking at a guy like Rob Gronkowski, but he doesn't want to play without Brady, and that's just 
where I think we both can agree. <laughs> yeah, I think he could get um, a decent chunk of money. Uh, oh yeah, I think oh, he, yeah. Could, he had a great if, year. If he if he if, if he wanted to, I mean, he's he's not like a he's not what he used to be, obviously, but like he's one of the better blocking tight ends in the league, and I think he could get seven eight million dollars a year from somebody if he went to the market. I just don't think that's going to happen. This is the easiest one for me. It's going to be like four year uh, four years. It's going to be one year four million dollars around there three million four million. Three to five with incentives, I think. Um, yeah, this is this is easy. Like I said, this guy literally said, "I'm going to retire." The the trade was agreed upon. The New England Patriots were going to trade him to the, the Detroit Lions, and he said, "I'm going to retire if you do that because I'm not playing with Tom Brady." He wasn't not considering coming. He he wasn't considering coming out of retirement until Tom Brady went to Tampa, right? Like if. if We've spoke to a few people. If Tom Brady had stayed in New England, Rob Gronkowski was not coming back. Yeah, right. So it was it was just the perfect storm. It's in Tampa. It's Florida. His mom lives in Florida. There's a lot of you know a lot of partying that can happen in Florida. You know, so I know uh, what Rob Ninkovich I think said uh, Miami. I just I uh, if he hits the market, sure, but I just don't think he's going to hit the market. And I think the Bucks want him back. Gronkowski wants him wants to be back. Brady obviously wants him back. So yeah, that's this is the easiest one for me. I think. Let's take a look at the other side of the ball and, and go over some defensive free agents the Buccaneers mm-hmm. have. First and foremost, the big man wearing number 93, and Domica Sue at defensive tackle. Interesting situation for Sue. He's made it clear that he wants to come back. He's a guy who's a little bit older, but I'll tell you what, I don't care how old he is. Last season, he looked pretty damn good, and I think he played his best season in a Bucks uniform. I wouldn't mind bringing back Sue. It, it just It's a matter of paying him less than what he made last year, I think. Yeah, it's a, Sue's a curious case because yeah, his 2019 I didn't think it was good at all. Like I just I, I don't know, he just looked like another dude. And I I said on the show last year I said I would not resign him. Like just wouldn't. And the Bucks did. They gave him what eight million dollars I believe on a one year deal. And yeah, he was better in 2020. He really was. So I thought he was going to retire uh, after the Super Bowl. Yeah. We talked, and I I said I think you know he's made his money. He's made plenty of money. I think. If you look in like NFL history, he's made like some of the most money in NFL history or something. I think like, literally ridiculous. like the accumulation of every contract he's ever had. I think he's one of the highest paid NFL players yeah. in history. He's been incredibly smart with his money. Yeah, he's been. Yeah, he's, he's a smart dude. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, he just won a ring. Go out on top. You're 34. He has twins on the way. But it sounds like he wants to give it a go. And I, I think – Tampa's the spot. I think there could be some interest from other teams. I think maybe he will hit the market, but I, I do think he'll end up in Tampa. Similar to Gronk, four to five million with some incentives. Uh, if you want eight million dollars, I don't think he comes back to Tampa. I think he goes elsewhere, and the Bucks are looking for a, a cheaper option. But um, I do think he comes back on a, a incentive uh, laden deal. An honest question here. Is there another team in the NFL that's going to pay him $8 million? I know he had an impressive season, but he is a little bit older, and I just don't know yeah. what his market would be for other teams looking for a D tackle. It's a name, though, man. Yeah, like, it is. It, it, Nadamik and Sue, he just won a Super Bowl champion, right? Like, it, it's a name. It's uh, I feel like there there could be a team. You know, there's... There's going to be a ton of teams. There's going to be a select like five or six teams with just a ton of cap space. Right. Right. That may look at Sue and be like, hey, like, why not? Right. Um, so it'll be interesting. Like I said, I don't think that happens. Uh, I think he'll go to the market, but I don't think somebody will actually offer him that. But you never know. And I, but I do think uh, he ends up coming back to Tampa. So really, I mean, we talked about a bunch of free agents here. We only got one leaving. Um, yeah. <laughs> which obviously the Bucks are going to have to do some uh, some uh, finagling with the cap. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about the finagling with the cap you had just mentioned here in a second, but I got a couple more names I want to go over. Defensive lineman Raheem Nunez Rochez. And a lot of people might roll their eyes at this, but let's face it, he really stepped up in the absence of Vita Vea. And I'd say that over these last two years, he's been a pretty solid piece of that defensive line as a rotational guy. He's played on some pretty team-friendly deals as well. I think it's been two one-year deals for less than $2 million. So I have no doubts that the Bucks are maybe going to go that same route again. 
Yeah, I think he's a safe bet for a minimum one-year deal type guy. He's, he is what he is. He's not really going to provide any pass rush at all, but he's a solid backup nose tackle that can defend against the run. So I think he's, he's a safe bet to be back, I think. Yeah. Linebacker Kevin Mentor, who had to fill in in that first playoff game in the absence of Devin White. And Kevin Mentor is a guy who I think can be a starting linebacker on most teams in the NFL. He was a special teams captain for the Buccaneers this year. And like I said, in the games that Devin White missed, he really came in and played a solid job. You think Kevin Mentor is a guy who can fetch some money outside of Tampa Bay? Not really. I, I think he's. I mean, he's getting older now. I think he's another like minimum guy. I don't, he's like a low end starting run, like starting linebacker, yeah. really low end. I think so. Like he did. He filled in well for Devin White in those two games that he missed. Um, you could tell that. I mean, Kevin Mincer isn't Devin White, <laughs> so um, you know there is some limitations there. But I, I think he'll he'll probably be back. I think Bruce Arians likes him. He likes it in Tampa, and I, yeah, I think he'll be back. One more name off of this list, and and personally, call me a little biased, I think it is priority number one for this football team, and you'll know exactly why. Number three, (laughs) Ryan Suckup, ice cold. Suckup's back, man. He has to be. Suckup doesn't suck. He doesn't, man. He he Um, does not. So, yeah. So, I'm going to go back to one of my, my older takes. I'll never forget, we were talking, I believe, the night they signed him. And I, I don't have the text pulled up. I don't. But I think I had said something along the lines of, you know, like we uh, we were talking and we were like, oh, Matt Gay, this and that, Ryan suck up, like we're doing this again. And I was just like, yeah, I, I got, got you some stats from suck up. And I was like, I don't know if this guy's very good, <laughs> right? Like I was like, I think the Bucks are going to be looking for another kicker like week six. And uh, boy, oh boy, did he prove me wrong, right? Um, it's uh, whew, I I don't <laughs> think anybody expected him to have the season he did. I mean, he was one of the like the most consistent, consistent kickers, right? In the in the entire league, and he didn't make miss a kick in the playoffs. Did not miss a single kick in the playoffs. Yeah, it's big kicks. Highest scoring season uh, in Bucks history. Yeah, so for for a kicker, it's. He's got to be back. He's. I think he'll maybe get a slight bump. I don't know what he made. I think it was maybe like the minimum, so maybe like one point five, one point seven five. Maybe I'd even go two million. Like yeah, paying I think some Bradley John, Pinion money, huh? Yeah, I mean yeah, <laughs> yeah, friend of the show, right? Um, so let's get Ryan on here. Uh, yeah. So let's just get the whole special teams unit. Yeah, Ryan, Zach, Bradley. Let's just get all round table. Um, so. Uh, I think John Ledyard had actually mentioned this. He joked around. He's like, yeah, any other team. He was like, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Like, just let him go get like paid and just, you find another kicker, but not this team because they had, you know, they have uh, done everything to find a kicker at a veteran young guy. They traded for guys. They signed guys. They signed undrafted for free agents. They, they freaking drafted guys in the second round and in the fifth <laughs> round and it doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, you got to keep him. He's, he's got to be back, and I, I think he will be. Uh, I, I do think he will be. So let's get into moving money around. I think there's going to be some players on the Buccaneers who were just cap casualties, and, you know, football at the end of the day is a business, and when you're in a situation like Tampa Bay is, you're going to have to make some business moves, and some of those might be at the expense of players who have been around for quite a while. Yeah. The names that come to mind, obviously, the first one is going to be Cam Bright, another guy like Will Golston. If the Buccaneers are cutting people to move some money around, are there any other candidates you think, or, or, or do you go right to a guy like Cam, and then, of course, Will being the next in that pecking order? Uh, no, I I don't see anybody else, really. That's obvious, at least. Yeah. Like, Donovan Smith and Ryan Jensen both have no more guaranteed money. Um, you could obviously cut them. Jason Light said like they're going to be back, but you could cut them and you could save a good chunk. But do you really want to find a starting center and left tackle? No way. <laughs> like you know, um, especially after you know Donovan Smith having a, a career year. Like, do you really want to do that? Ryan Jensen. I mean, you could say. I mean, you could save nearly thirty million dollars almost just by cutting those two guys. But yet again, you're just creating more holes. So, Will Golston, he's a starter, but. Man, I believe, let me check here. I think he is making, I mean, five and a half million, you can save by cutting him. He's, 
that's that's too much, right? On a team that's trying to, like, you got to make some sacrifices, right? Diana Rossini, te- you know, texted the head coach, and the head coach said next week is going to be a massacre around the NFL. You know, we already seen guys getting cut. Kyle Rudolph, uh, Kyle Van Noy. If your name's Kyle, you're screwed. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's going to be a shitty week for all the Kyles. If, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like every day is a crappy day if your name's Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to any Kyles that are out there listening to this. I love you all. Uh, but anyway, I mean, Cameron Bray, you can say six and a half. Uh, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be easy to retain these guys, and those are the types of sacrifices you're going to have to make. Uh, Cameron Bray's been on this team forever. Will Golson's one of the longest tenured bucks. I believe he's second longest behind Levante David. Yeah, you know he's been here since 2013. Like it's, I'm it's glad crazy. he. I'm glad that you know he's one of those guys who finally got a Super Bowl ring as well. Yeah, I, I mean it's awesome, you know. Uh, it would have been a shame if a guy like Will Golston or Levante David, you know, left just like a Gerald McCoy or something like that and didn't get a ring, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that both of those guys are going to be cut. The only way they're not cut is if, man, they take some – not not restructures. They take some serious pay cuts. Yeah. Like, they have to take some – like, pay – like, literally, I am paying you less. You're not getting this money. I am paying you less. We're not throwing it around any other years. With Will Golston, you can't. Um, so a lot of people have asked me, why can't they just restructure, you know, Ryan Jensen, Donovan Smith and Will Golston, uh, they have one year left on their deal. So you can't restructure a deal that only has one year on it because you can't put the money anywhere else. Right. So the it, only it, thing, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to, you know, kind of throw in there that when you restructure a deal, it's not like that money goes anywhere. You just no, spread just, it, it out. A, yeah. yeah. You just spread it out a little bit differently. So it'll help you out. For, the you know, player, the players, the players still getting it right. And Mike Evans has done it a bunch and the players still getting the money. So yeah. uh, it's just in a different form. Maybe it's, it's maybe it's right now and it'll actually save you more, you know, down the line. So um, the only way you're going to be able to save any money with Ryan Jensen, Diamond Smith and Will Golston is if you'd give them a, extensions and what you can do is you give them extensions to lower their 2021 cap hit but then raise their 2022 or 2023 etc uh will golston you're not going to give him an extension he's just not that type of guy um he's a he's a starter but he's like a he's not a complete impact starter you know what i mean like he's not that type of guy that He's going to be considered among the best players on the defense. Like well, I remember sock. reacting to the last extension that they gave him. It was kind of a shock just because, you know, for the longest time, I hate to it was say a, it. That this was way. like a five-year deal, I think. It, for the longest time, I will say, it felt like they tried to make Will Golston a player that he simply wasn't. Now, obviously, Todd Bowles, mm-hmm. his scheme came in, moved him over on the line, and it just basically the 3-4 brought... 3-4 defense is definitely better. Dude, it brought new life into his career, and he has been playing lights out. But... He's just at that age or similar to yeah. Levante David. He's not a guy that you're really going to go. Well, not really Levante, but in the in the case of Will Golston, he's not a guy that you're going to bend backwards to, you know, bring back on an extension. The age is a factor. And then, of course, the casualty to the cap is all everything that ties into why I think he just won't be here. And, and I know yeah. you agree. So yeah. so I, I do want to say, though, Diamond Smith, Ryan Jensen, those are two potential uh, contract extension guys. I think Jensen's more likely. Do they just do the Bucks just add another year just to have him? You know, right. just two more years of Ryan Jensen. Uh, his I'm cap down. it right now is just right a now. straight. It's just right now. Uh, <laughs> it's just a straight. You know, ten million dollars. So, do they add another year so you can lower it? Maybe save three, four million dollars this year. You know, you could do that with Donovan Smith. I know some people have wondered if he's even going to want an extension because. Donovan Smith might want some big money next year. If he if he has another year next year like he did this year, especially like a playoff run, he's not going to be cheap. So oh, yeah. uh, does does he want an extension right now? I Probably not. I mean, unless it's for a lot of money. So I, I think Jensen is definitely one of the guys that could get an extension. And also another man who could get an extension with one year left on his contract yeah. is uh, Mr. Tom Brady. Uh, I do think that he will end up getting an extension to bring down his cap hit. Ben Roethlisberger just reworked his contract and signed a new deal with the Steelers, saved the Steelers $15 million. So yeah. uh, the, the Bucks could do something very similar uh, to Tom Brady's contract, and I think Brady would, would be open to it. So I think that will end up happening. I think Jensen will probably get an extension. 
Golston and Braid are gone. And I think those are the brunt of it. And then obviously restructures and stuff. Uh, Mike Evans, Ali Marpet, two guys that could, I know I'm going on a little bit of a rant here, but um, Mike Evans could save you about $7 million, a little over 7 million and Marpet a little over 6 million. So, I mean, now you're looking at, you know, you're able to, that's a lot of cap space you can free up, you know? Uh, so you're not going to be able to spend much of it in free agency because like we just talked about, we're bringing almost everybody back. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you're not going to be very active in free agency, but as far as bringing everybody back, I think those are the moves they can do. Now let's look at some possible replacements. If we have to look at a future without Levante David, without Shaq Barrett, without Chris Godwin, who are some guys that you have on your uh, your free agency tracker this season is, is maybe the Bucks could bring in as a cheap replacement, mostly on that defensive line because I think – I think if they're going to do anything like that, it's it's going to be there first before anywhere else. Yeah, I, well, I do want to talk about Levon Diddy real quick just to bring up, you know, Matt Milano again. Um, like I said, he's a younger linebacker. He's not the same type of player, but he, he's a good player. He, he's a good player, and he might cost a little bit less. Yeah. Um, or maybe he costs the same, but at the same time, he's like, four years younger than Levante David. So, you know, do do you weigh that? Uh, Another name, KJ Wright from the Seahawks. He'll probably cost a little bit less. He's a veteran. Uh, But like I said, he'll probably cost a little bit less. So let's talk about the the defensive line. Uh, As far as Sue goes, I don't really know. Um, I ultimately think he's back. I think he's back, but if he wouldn't go, I I still think they'd have to cut Golston. Like, uh, I mean, and maybe if, if they, if they don't, if they don't bring back Sue, maybe Golston stays, but I don't know, man, I think it's going to be, it would be tough to keep Golston either way. I think so. Uh, The interior defensive line draft class is not great. It's, 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 it's not great. And uh, Christian Barrymore's there. Will he be there at 32? I have my doubts. I don't really think he will be. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. As far as Shaq Barrett, uh, the name that I like the most is probably – I list all his outside linebackers, right? And Melvin Ingram has injury history. Uh, he's like 32 anyway. Matt Judon is is like 28, so he's right in the same boat as Shaq Barrett. I, I do like Yann Nagakwe because I, I just – I think he's good. Like, I, I do. Yeah. I, I, I think he's good. I Maybe he's not on Shaq Barrett's level. I think Shaq's a better player. Like, the the Bucks' best bet is to bring back Shaq Barrett. Like yeah, it agreed. Um, but I do think that, you know, I, I, I like Ngakwe uh, as a replacement. So, Bud Dupree, I think the, the, the thing with Bud Dupree is he's going to cost basically, I think, almost the same amount of money, maybe a tad less because of the injury. Um, but if, if that's the case, why don't you just – you know, pay Barrett, who you know fits in the defense, uh, unless you think Bud Dupree's just far and away a better player, which I don't know about that. So uh, a few names here. I'm just looking at the free agency list really quick. Uh, if they wanted to replace Nadal and Sue or Will Golston, uh, Solomon Thomas from the San Francisco 49ers is a former top five pick, uh, is a solid player. Henry Anderson was just cut from the Jets. Uh, he had his best season under Todd Bowles. I believe Greg Allman had pointed it out a few weeks ago that if Anderson's cut, maybe, you know, maybe there's a fit with the Bucks. He had his best season with Todd Bowles and Casey Rogers in New York. Uh, maybe he comes in as some depth. Um, I, I think that's that's a real possibility. What do you think uh, of uh, a guy like Derek Wolf from Baltimore? I like Derek Wolf. I've always liked him, but I don't know if he's like a replacement for Sue. To me, he's more of like a depth guy. Right. If you get you know Sue and Wolf, sure. Like, you and know, I mean, I'll, let's I'll also throw this in there while we're talking about it. Another guy on that defensive line who is a free agent is Steve McClendon. Uh, I don't yeah, I, know if McClendon will uh, be back. So when you're looking at these depth guys, I think it's important to maybe. You know, factor in a guy like Wolf or even those depth guys as as you would rank them. Yeah, I, I don't think he's gonna be back. I just, I don't know. I think he might end up retiring if if nobody's really after. Him. I mean, he he's seen it all know. in the twenty twenty season. He went from the Jets right. to being a Super Bowl champion. I mean, what else do you the, need to accomplish? Jets. He went from the Jets, drove in his own car to Miami, from Miami to Tampa, and won a Super Bowl. Yeah, it's it's a little crazy. Um, I don't think he's back, but let's let's talk about receiver because I don't think that's something we've talked about a lot because I think a lot of us are kind of assuming that Chris Godwin's going to be back and Antonio Brown might be back. What if there's if there's a world where neither of them are back, right? Let's say Chris Godwin is just like, hey, like 
you know, like I want a long term deal. Like, what if he, you know, if he threatens, like I'm not going to play on the franchise tag. Like, I want this. And Antonio Brown's like, hey, like I'm getting like seven, eight million dollars. Antonio Brown's like th- what, thirty two years old. Like, there's yeah. a limit there. Even if the Bucks would have cap space, even if they would let Godwin go, you would say, oh, we'll just pay Brown whatever he wants. Well, and he's he's thirty two years old. How much do you really want to pay him? So, I, I mean, there there's a few names here. Uh, Will Fuller's interesting from Houston. Uh, if they were to lose Godwin, Corey Davis would be my my name though. Uh, that would be my guy. I would I would definitely go after a guy like Corey Davis. He was somebody I was high on uh, pre draft in 2017. Um, he was my wide receiver one that year uh, above Mike Williams and John Ross. So uh, I Corey Davis would be my guy. You know, he's actually a good fit. Juju Smith Schuster is a pretty good fit for what they like to do because Boo-boo he's almost Schuster. like he's he's similar. I mean, <laughs> I'd I'd be doing all the TikTok dances and stuff, right? I'd I'd have to I'd have to learn them all. So, um, uh, yeah, I he's a good fit because he's very similar to Godwin, right? Uh, Corey Davis and Will Fuller are a little bit different players, but I think if you're looking for a guy similar to Godwin, maybe for a little bit less. If Godwin gets 20 million, 21 million, does Smith Schuster cost you 15, 16? Uh, maybe the Bucks would do that, but I don't think Godwin's going to go anywhere. But those are three names. I, I think Trevor Sikkim had actually point out those three names as well, but I would like Corey Davis the most. So if we're in a situation where we lose Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin, Adam Humphreys reunion has to happen, right? Nah, has to nah. at this point. Like, I know we trust Tyler Johnson to really step <laughs> up, but I mean, come on, dude. Adam Humphreys, Brady to Humphreys, come on, bro. Come on. No, like, it's not, it's not a fit. It's, 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 it's not a fit. Like, and also, what number is he going to wear? Scotty Miller's got 10. Blaine Gabbard, who's probably going to be back, got 11. Like, what's he going to change his number again? Yeah. Like, man, oh, man. Yeah. This guy would have, this guy, guy might be the only, the only person in Tampa to have three different numbers is <laughs> he's got went from, went from 11, 11 to 10 to <laughs> 11 to 10 to whatever, maybe, you know, like 15 or something. I don't know. Hey, but, I mean, we're no strangers uh, to changing numbers down here. You remember how many rookies changed their numbers from last year or uh, I guess two years ago now when you look at it that well, way. Ronald, Carlton, Ronald da- Carlton Davis was 33, went to 24. 33. Jordan oh, Whitehead right. went from 31 to 33, I think. No, no, he was he was thirty three, went to thirty one. Well, uh, I think no, no, no. no I Antoine think it was the opposite. Yeah, Carlton you're, you're Davis right, is right, wearing thirty right. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, uh, yeah, Jordan Mike Whitehead went to thirty one, thirty four to thirty two. That's right. And then is that it? No, Sean Murphy one thing changed it from twenty six to twenty three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then that's so, it. Jamel Dean was the only player that didn't change it. Um, yeah, it's it's the look. Cool. Well, I mean, Ronald Jones was originally supposed to be twenty two. Devin White was supposed to be 41. So, yeah, it happens. But, um, anyway, we just got sidetracked there. But, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's there's a good bit of free agents there if they would, you know, if they would lose Godwin. I don't think they're going to. But um, I do want to talk about – I don't know what you had next. I do, do want to touch on the free agent running backs. Yeah, go for uh, it. A little bit. So, it's a good year to be the Bucks because I think it's a good year to, to need a pass-catching running back. Oh yeah, it yeah, is. If you're if you're looking in free agency and in the draft, I mean, you got Duke Johnson, who was just recently re- re- I can't talk recently released. James White, who that's the obvious one, right? Everybody and their mother is going to bring up James White because Tom Brady, this and that. Um, we'll see what happens, right? Duke Johnson, I think, is a little bit younger, so uh, we'll see there. Rex Burkhead, another New England running back. Uh, TJ Yeldon, Deion Lewis, another former New England running back. Jared one McKinnon. of my favorite guys here. Yeah, right there. <laughs> one of my favorite guys. If I'm not sure that this will show how many people have like been following me on like social media for like how long. Uh, what was it the twenty the 2017 off season, I think it was. That I man, Jared McKinnon was my guy. Like yeah. If I was gonna, I was gonna throw all the money at him, <laughs> like literally. And then, like, he signed with the 49ers, and I was like, man. And the Bucks actually had like legitimate ish- interest in him, uh, like they they wanted him, but it was just too much money. So he's had a lot of injury concerns, but he's a guy I'm never stopped loving. So uh, I would definitely take him. Uh, Chris Thompson from Jacksonville, uh, 
Adrian Peterson's not really a fit. Like I, I know he said they would like to come, but no. Like I mean, even on the lower side, a guy like Theo Riddick, like he could be a fit. Um, Jamal Williams from Green yeah. Bay, I think. Yeah, Jamal. I, I see a lot of people think Jamal Williams is going to come cheap. I think he's actually going to make around five, six million dollars. He, he probably I think will. He's be. I, I, I would love to have him. Like I think he'd be a good player. Like I think he's a really good player, but. Um, I just think he's going to be a little bit expensive. And then the last one, Tevin Coleman, who's another guy that I've really, really liked. He's dealt with a lot of injuries. Um, so, I mean, I, I think your best bets are probably either Duke Johnson or James White, but a guy like Jarvis Ken and Tevin Coleman would certainly be be uh, very good options as well. And then, obviously, we'll talk about the draft, but there's a lot of pass catcher running backs in the draft. So there's there's an option. There's a lot of options for the Bucks to, to add a pass catching running back if they don't bring back uh, Leonard Fournette or LaShawn McCoy, who LaShawn McCoy is not likely to be back. So Absolutely. Before we wrap things up, I want to remind everybody – that support for the Cane Fire podcast is brought to you by our good friends over at eBay. As the original sneaker marketplace, eBay is the place to go to cop the pair that you've been eyeing for a while. Whether it's rare dead stock or the latest release, find the exact shoe that you're looking for. With eBay's authenticity guarantee, your sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional authenticators. A team of experienced sneaker authenticators verify the box, the logo, stitching, and dozens of other inspection points that you might miss on a surface level. Each sneaker also really, uh, also receives an authenticity guarantee tag that includes a digital stamp of authenticity. And it also protects sellers with a verified return process. And for all you sneaker sellers out there, eBay has eliminated selling fees on sneakers over 100 bucks, making it free to sell or flip your collection. So go to ebay.com slash sneakers today. eBay, the world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection. God, I used eBay for years and never really thought of it as a sneaker marketplace, but here they are, and, and they have really proven to be one of the best in the game. This podcast is all to, uh, also brought to you by your friends over at betonline.ag. Football might be over, but the NBA, March Madness, and the NHL are in full swing. The only place you should be betting on all of that is over at Bet Online. They cover awards, TV shows, reality TV. It's kind of incredible how much you can really bet on over there. But go check it out. Hundreds of props, real-time odds, and almost anything you can imagine. And, of course, the 24-hour online casino. So head to the website. Tell you right your... now, you got to gotta bet. Got to bet on Joel Embiid, MVP. Got to oh, yeah, go to bet go. online and bet Joel Embiid for MVP. Go how those there. 76ers got you feeling this year? Confident? Good. I mean, the James Harden trade was a crusher. Yeah. That was a crusher. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. They're still number one in the East. So, had a big time win against Utah. And, um, you know, maybe trading for a guy like Kyle Lowry. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, um that man, that dream I talked to you about, it. like that James Harden trade had me. Phew, that like broke your I, heart, man. Oh my god, I was, I was literally like, I was still doing podcast, everything because the Bucks were in the playoffs. But man, on the outside, I looked fine. On the inside, that was a wreck. So. Well, I'll tell you what, if you are on the Embiid for MVP train, just like Evan it is, then head over to Bet Online. Use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Once again, bet online, your online sportsbook expert. Evan, I think we've covered the bases on this one, man. I, I think that's just about going to do it for this episode, right? We we hit everything we wanted to today. Yeah, I, I think so. I I mean, we've talked about literally everything. Uh, there's obviously a lot of minor free agents out there, you know, for the Bucks that you know they'll, they'll be back most likely or you're not really going to care as guys like ryan smith uh ross cockrell tj um, logan I, yeah I don't, tj logan i don't think is probably gonna be back but i think yeah. ryan smith and ross cockrell especially cockrell like you might want to bring that guy back because he's he was a good player and uh we'll see what happens they're gonna have to do some maneuvering though they yeah. do not have a lot of cap space right now the official number hasn't been set but they do not have a lot of cap space right now um but I mean, we'll we'll likely be talking to you guys sometime next week because I think next week is when a lot of stuff is going to happen because the the cap numbers officially is supposed to be officially set next week. Like I said, the franchise tag deadline is March 9th. so it's in four days. If the Bucks do not franchise tag Chris Godwin by then, they can't do it. So um, yeah, we'll definitely probably have some news there, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. I'm sure. 
Absolutely. With all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out this episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Whether you're watching us with video over on YouTube, subscribe if you haven't already. Or if you're checking us out on any of our podcast outlets, we truly do appreciate your support. Check out the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those are Cannon Fire Podcast. Best place to go for updates on the show and, of course, Buccaneer news as it happens. Speaking of Bucks news as it happens, you can check out my co-host Evan on Instagram at Bucks underscore daily. The number one Buccaneers fan page on Instagram creeping up on 30,000 followers. You can also follow him on Twitter at EvanNFL. And last but not least, you can find myself, Instagram, and Twitter at Redicus, R-H-E-T-T-A-K-U-S. If you follow me, I will follow you back. Like I said, next time we talk to you guys, we'll probably be coming with some breaking news. So so get ready. Get excited. The possibilities are endless, and the offseason is about ready to get going. So we'll talk to you guys next time. Until then, I am your host, Rhett Matthews, signing off from my co-host, Evan Wanish. We'll talk to you a little bit later. Until then, go Bucks.